Hey there, Sportsline on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us. It's Monday night. It's News Channel 5 Plus. Our phone lines are going to be open 737-7767. We'd love to hear from you and invite you into the program tonight. One of the big things we're going to do tonight is we're going to create March Madness on the program. If you are anything like me, you are missing it desperately right now. Sports in general, I'm missing right now. Just the idea that we don't have the games, we don't have the ability to talk about them and dissect things and play Monday morning quarterback and all those sort of things about so much right now. The distraction from everything that's going on. That's, that's the fundamental thing that I love about sports and I love about our job in trying to bring sports to you is that the world is complicated and it's difficult and life is hard sometimes. And what sports forever has been is it has been the ability to escape from that. It's been the ability to put your nine to five or nine to six job aside for a moment and escape to be with your team, to escape to be with other fans. It's been the ability to put political differences aside and cheer with the person next to you. That's what it's always been. And that's the thing that in a lot of ways I think is such a gut punch about what we're going through right now. I know certainly it is for me and I know some people definitely share this thing is for so long when life gets tough, sports is what you turn to. And now life is tough and it means sports aren't happening either. And that just means life is tougher. Certainly not our biggest concern right now, but there is no way to really escape with the games that we all know and love. And so one thing we've definitely tried hard to do is to find the stories that bring some uplifting news within sports. The stories of maybe an overlooked athlete. The story of someone that's turning this heartbreak into motivation for the future or something to be excited about positive down the road. We've tried to do that as much as possible here because I think we need it right now in this climate. But I also think when we look at what's going on, one of the big things we miss is that debate. The ability for you to call in here and say, I think this, this is what the Titans need to do. This is what's going on in the NCAA tournament. This is what the Predators have to have happen to make the playoffs. And maybe I'll agree, maybe I'll disagree. But that back and forth is something that I think we all miss right now. And so we're trying to recreate that as much as possible. We can certainly do that with your phone calls here tonight on the program about free agency, about the Titans next year, about the Predators playoff push when they will come back at some point about anything college sports related. We can get into all of that. 737-7767, the number. But what I w want to get to tonight is what we did last night on the Electric Power Company Sunday Sports Central, if you missed it. We're going to dive in to the NCAA tournament. It is the premier tournament in the world. In terms of the drama, you got 68 teams involved. They range from the bluest of the blue bloods in college basketball, your Kansases and your Kentuckys and your Dukes, to the smallest of colleges. Hofstra back in this year for the first time in basically 20 years. Rutgers, who hadn't been around for a long time, back in the tournament this year. You've got the historically black schools, you've got the really small schools, you've got the Ivy League schools, everybody's represented. They may not be number one in the country. They may not have a really good shot to win even a game, let alone cut down the nets as national champion. But they're represented. And their school and their fans and their community and their alumni can all get behind that for a few days, a week, Maybe a month if they're lucky. We're missing that right now. And what I haven't seen anywhere is somebody try to play out the tournament on TV. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do it again here tonight. And we invite you to be involved. Like you hate our bracket. You hate our picks. Any of that? Call us up. 
Let me know. 737-7767. We can dive into that over the course of the night. Some news from today, just around the world. The Olympics officially came out and said that it will postpone to next year. We already knew that the Olympics were being moved off of the date from this summer and postponed into next year. We just didn't really know when. Well, today they came out and said it's going to be pushed 364 days. So basically a full calendar year into next year, and it will open up on July 23rd of 2021. The Tokyo 2020 games will open on July 23rd of 2021. So we'll dive into some of the ramifications of that. I had a chance to catch up with Joe Fry, who's the throwing coach for Belmont track and field. He's also one of the best hammer throwers in the country. He was scheduled to try to qualify, likely qualify for the U.S. Olympic trials in that event, which would have been held in June. His goal was to get to the U.S. Olympic finals there and see how he could do, see if possibly he could then qualify for the Olympics. But he's towards the end of his career, and if he would have gotten to that place, even there, if he didn't make the Olympic team, it would have been sort of the fitting send-off for his career of about 15 years in the professional ranks. I got a chance to talk to him this afternoon about going through this entire process from trying to prepare in 2020, as if you're going to go through all this and try to qualify for the Olympics, finding out that events are starting to get canceled and things are starting to close and wondering how you're going to be able to properly train to do this. And then seeing last week that the Olympics canceled or at least postponed the event. That's the word I should use, I guess. But moved it out of 2020. And so you know that all of that work that you've done isn't going to pay off in the immediate and then the emotions of what you do then and how you move forward and now today finding out okay it's on in 2021 what's my plan moving forward all that you got to figure out when you're in his shoes and so we talked to joe fry about that we'll get to that if we don't get to it tonight we will get to it tomorrow here on the program as we move along here in this week Another big note today from the NCA, the Division I Guidance Committee met this afternoon on the discussion of what you do with the athletes impacted by the cancellations in all the sports this year. And what they ultimately came down with is that every athlete in the spring sports, your baseballs, softball, tennis, golf, track and field, all of those athletes are going to get an extra year of eligibility. And I don't think anybody can really argue with that because I don't think any of those sports were more than halfway through. Maybe some of them would maybe reach the halfway point, but nobody was really past that point. Many were far in front of that milestone this spring when their seasons were canceled. So now all those players, athletes, will have the opportunity to come back for another season if they would so choose. The individual schools are going to have to figure out how they are going to allocate their scholarship numbers and the scholarship money that they have. But the NCA is saying that's up to the school. We're going to allow these players to come back for an extra year of eligibility because of what happened if the schools can work it out. And it's also believed that seniors who want to come back for a fifth year are not going to count against your scholarship limit next year if you were counting on them being a part of your team or, or not being a part of your team next year. They were a part this year. You figured they were going to graduate. You're planning a team around that. If those seniors want to come back, they can come back and they won't count against your scholarship limit. So all those things I think are good. They're very positive for the student athletes. Some people wondered if it would happen for college basketball, but when you think about it, all of those winter sports were basically down to their postseasons at that point. And a lot of seniors had already played their final game. I mean, even college basketball, where we hadn't gotten to the NCAA tournament, we hadn't really started the SEC tournament and some of the big conferences. When you think about it, about 230 to 250 of the Division I programs 
had wrapped up at that point. And so how do you properly administer another year to seniors who were affected? Because a bunch of the seniors were already done. So the decision was made that no senior gets an extra year. So it's very unfortunate for them that it's over in that regard. But I don't know if there's a better way to do it. It's just a very unfortunate situation and obviously one that we're all dealing with right now. NFL free agency, no big moves here in the last few days by the Titans, but a former Titan signing tonight with the Seattle Seahawks. Chance Warmack, who's the Titans 10th overall pick back in 2013, signing a one year $910,000 deal with the Seahawks to try to rejuvenate his career. Warmack again, first round pick 2013, started 48 games for the Titans at left guard before he broke his hand in 2016 and ended up missing 14 games that season. And that ended his time here in Tennessee. He went on to sign with the Eagles, spent a couple of years there, also battling injuries. He was technically a part of their Super Bowl championship team, but only played in three games early that season, none in the playoffs. And so last season, the 2019 season, he took the entire year off to try to just rehabilitate himself and get healthy. Apparently he is, or at least he's impressed somebody enough to think that. And so Chance Warmack is signed with the Seahawks. One last chance to see if he can get a career that started with a lot of promise as a top 10 pick in the draft, try to get it back off the ground and, you know, rejuvenate himself out there in Seattle. So, all of those things going on in the world of sports right now. We will continue to try to update you on all that stuff as we move along. But next, when we come back, we will dive in to our NCAA tournament bracket. The News Channel 5 mock bracket will also get your thoughts on the NCAA tournament or anything else. 737-7767. But we turn ourselves to March Madness Coming up after this, we'll even have one shining moment before the night's over because that's what you do in March. We're going to do it for you. We're going to have some fun. Stick around with us. This is Sportsline on News Channel 5 Plus.